Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. This month I've been talking about movie and TV series adaptations of books, and in this video I want to talk about a really common trend over the past decade or so, which is when there is a book being adapted or particularly a final book of a series being adapted into a movie, they make it into more than one movie. Now this isn't totally a recent phenomenon. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows was one of the big turning points in terms of they did it and then everybody started imitating them. But from what I was able to find, there were movies that were made in multiple parts before that, including some that were based on books. Even when not based on books, there are older movies that sometimes come in multiple parts. For instance, Titanic has an intermission built into it. That's not based on a book, it's based on a historical event. But even if you get, you know, the modern version on DVD or whatever, it has like the two disc format with an intermission kind of built into it just because it's so long. I'm not sure how that worked when it was originally in the theater, but one can see why that would be a logical way to do things because plays and musicals often do the same thing. They're often significantly longer than movies, and that's one of the reasons why when a musical, for instance, is adapted into a movie, a lot is usually cut from it because musicals tend to be longer. They also tend to involve intermissions so that people can go use the restroom and get refreshments and whatnot. That's not quite the same as releasing a movie in two parts, though. When a movie is released in two parts, as in like part one comes out this year and part two comes out next year, that's something a little bit different because then there is a long time gap between the two. Each of the two parts basically functions as a standalone movie at that point, or an installment in a series. That's what we see with modern franchises that adapt movies into two parts, like for instance, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Breaking Dawn, Mocking Jay, The Hobbit. I would say Allegiant, but they never made the last one, so that doesn't really count. Basically at that point you're increasing the number of installments in a series, and so I think personally it's important at that point that each of those movies, the part one and part two, or part three, or whatever it is, stand on their own. That you can watch them and feel like you've gotten a whole story, even if, yes, it does end with some things unresolved because, you know, there's going to be a sequel or whatever. It should feel like an installment in a series and not like half of a movie. One thing that I want to address is the question of why this would be done. Now, the answer that you'll typically get when they're giving, like, an interview explaining why they chose to do this is because they had too much story to tell and they couldn't fit it all into one normal length movie, so they made two. Now, in some cases, I do find that to be a believable reason. Movies based on books often have to cut out a lot of stuff, and so if all of the stuff in the book is important, or let's say it's the final book in a series and it has a lot to include, or it's just really long, then I can see why that might be necessary. However, the cynical side of me says if they make more than one movie, they make more money off of it which would probably be the reason, at least, that they're usually spaced out like a normal movie series, rather than like a movie with an intermission, like you've got part one and then an intermission and then part two. So even if the decision is mainly a creative one, the fact that they're released as two separate movies on two separate dates is at least somewhat financially motivated. And I mean, I can't totally criticize that because this is a for-profit thing, like, making books into movies is done because they think they'll make money off of it, so that's just something that is a reality of the situation. But it does raise the question of, is it always, then, a good creative decision when it's done, or is it sometimes done unnecessarily just for extra profit? Personally, I tend to think that there are a few specific circumstances under which making a book into more than one movie is a good idea and a few circumstances in which it's very much not a good idea. The biggest and most important thing for me is that there is legitimately too much content to fit into one single movie. So, like, for instance, the novel Les Miserables by Victor Hugo is really, really long. Like, most English translations, if they're not abridged, are somewhere around 1,400 pages or thereabouts. It depends, you know, on the edition and the page size and the font size and whatnot, but it is a really long book. And for sure, any adaptation would need to cut things out. Like, for instance, The Sewers and The Battle of Waterloo, those are really not something that any movie watcher is going to tolerate spending a long amount of time on, beyond what events there are important for the plot. However, it still takes place over a span of many years, follows a huge cast of characters, and has many, many important events in the plot that just can't be eliminated from the story. 
It's been adapted as miniseries and as a musical, and even the musical, which is really long, like the movie based on the musical cuts things from the musical and is still a really long movie, but there's still a lot from the book that it doesn't include. So if somebody were to want to make a two-part movie out of that, I would have absolutely no objection to it because, hey, there's too much there to fit into one. Most books are not the length of Les Miserables, and they don't have the huge scope and large cast of characters and all of the many intertwining plot threads that Les Miserables has. So in most cases, just the length of the book is not going to be enough. If it's just a normal 300 page, 400 page book or something, then I don't really consider that to be long enough on its own to justify splitting the movie in two. Here are a couple more reasons, though, why even if it's not absurdly long, splitting it might make a good choice. The one that's usually used to justify stuff like this is that it's the final installment in a series. In the final installment of a series, you really don't want to leave a lot of loose ends. Also, with movie adaptations being what they are, sometimes things were left out of previous movies that were in previous books and that then you have to account for. The Harry Potter series had some real trouble with that. I made a video where I talked some about that and I will put a link. In any case, my point being, it is sometimes easier to justify for the final book in a series just because of how final books in a series usually work. However, that's only the case if the series is one that has like an overarching plot line that builds up through each book and then is resolved in the final one. That's not going to be the case for something like, say, your average mystery series where each book is a different mystery to be solved. Even if they follow the same detective, there's usually not an overarching plot and a lot of loose ends from one book to another. It also only works if that final book really is doing a lot. So, like, for instance, I'm not a big fan of Breaking Dawn Part 1 and Part 2. Now, full disclosure, I did read the Twilight books when they were popular back in the day, and I did go to see the movies when they came out. I was never, like, a really diehard fan, but I enjoyed it, as most teenage girls in that time period did. However, even at the time, I remember thinking that Breaking Dawn should not be a part one and a part two. I gotta be honest with you, it's been a long time since I've watched these movies, but I remember Breaking Dawn part one just felt like nothing really happened in it. Like, yes, they got married and she had a baby and she became a vampire, but all of that could have been like just the first third or quarter of a movie based on the whole book. And then the second part is even worse, because it has this whole battle scene that wasn't in the book, and the battle scene turns out to have all just been a dream, basically. And so, like, there's this whole extended sequence in that movie that didn't need to be there. In many ways, even though it's shorter, I feel like there's a lot more justification for splitting Mockingjay, the third Hunger Games book, into a part one and a part two than there is for Splitting Breaking Dawn. Because even though it's normal length, very similar in length to the other books in the series, there's a lot going on in Mockingjay, both in terms of character development, in terms of wrapping up the plot, and in terms of focusing in on the series' important themes. Because I feel like if the important themes were not represented accurately, one would come away from The Hunger Games with a very wrong impression of what it was even about. And I actually have very mixed feelings about particularly the first Hunger Games movie in terms of how it handles that and how it represents the story without Katniss's first-person point of view and looking at it more from the outside. However, I think that splitting the last movie into two parts was actually a good decision because it allowed more of the quiet moments to develop the characters and explore the themes, as opposed to just focusing on the violence of the story. Because yes, it's a very violent book, but that's not really the point. Or it kind of is, but you're missing a lot if that's all that you're looking at. And then my fourth criteria is that it should have a natural place to split it preferably somewhere between about halfway and three quarters of the way through the book. If there's not a natural place to split the story in two, then the two halves are not going to feel like a complete story. And one of the big challenges when it comes to making a movie based on part of a book is that it often won't feel like a complete story. Most stories have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and something happens early on in the story that kind of gets the plot going, and something happens at the end that brings it to what's called a climax, and then a resolution. And if you split it in the middle, you're losing half of that. So there's got to be a moment somewhere along the way that feels like a natural place where something has been accomplished, something has been wrapped up, and then the very next thing that happens gets things going again, but 
with a new kind of, not necessarily a new plot line, because again, you're splitting a book and so there's going to be an overarching plot that continues through both parts. But like, for instance, while it's not the exact point that I would have chosen if it had been up to me, I feel like the place where they split Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows was a pretty logical one. There had just been a battle and a major death, which echoed the endings of movies four, five, and six, and it was a quiet moment where the characters were relatively safe but still had work to do, picking up again in that quiet moment and then following them on, you know, the end of their adventure. And then my fourth criteria is that it should only be split into more than one movie if you can fill up those movies without adding to it, like without adding new plot lines, new characters, and whatnot. And you might be able to tell where I'm going with that. I really was not a fan of the Hobbit movies. Now, if you've watched some of my previous videos about Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings and whatnot, you might know that I'm not a huge Tolkien fan just in general. I appreciate the Lord of the Rings as an important work of literature, but it's not something that I personally find super engaging or that I go to very regularly just for pleasure reading. However, I do very strongly feel that the Hobbit movies did a huge disservice to the Hobbit book. They added so much to that story that did not need to be there. New characters, new storylines, Gandalf running around with that other wizard, the elf girl falling in love with the dwarf guy, long battle scenes that were just so drawn out and had absolutely no tension to them. The parts of the story that actually came from The Hobbit stood out in contrast to all the stuff that was added. Ultimately, I just got the feeling that there was absolutely no need for, probably not even for two parts to that, let alone for three, if they had to add that much stuff to it to make those movies long enough to justify being a separate movie. So all in all, I feel like it can be done well, but it's often done badly, and I feel like a broken record saying that because I've said that so many times about different topics that I've discussed this month. It can be done well, but it's often done badly, it's often done for the wrong reasons, it's often done in cases where it doesn't need to be. And so, let's talk about alternatives. One alternative to splitting a book into more than one movie is to make it into just one movie, even if it's a longer movie, say two and a half or three hours. Now, I feel like when you go past about three hours, a lot of people will feel like that's too long for a movie. But I feel like most people who enjoy movies based on books would rather see a slightly longer faithful adaptation, or at least mostly faithful adaptation, than a shorter one, say two hours or so, that cuts important things out or otherwise just doesn't really follow the book. If the story is just a normal length book with a relatively simple straightforward plotline and it's not the final book in a series, it's usually pretty feasible to make it into one movie, even if some things need to be cut and even if it does need to be a little bit on the longer side. And I think that in most cases that's more appropriate than splitting it into more than one movie. The other option is to split it into many short episodes and make it a TV show. That's something that's been very commonly done in the age of streaming with things like Netflix and Hulu series that are based on books, but it also goes back earlier. Most Jane Austen fans, for instance, would be able to tell you about the BBC Pride and Prejudice miniseries from 1995 and how utterly superior that is to any other adaptation of that work. When a book is adapted as a TV series, you don't expect each episode to tell the entire story. It would be kind of surprising if it did, unless this was like, I don't know, a children's series based on a series of picture books or something. Instead, each episode is based on a few chapters and the plot unfolds over the course of the season, giving potentially much longer than a single movie or even a pair of movies to tell the story. I think that this could also be very helpful for books that don't follow the traditional three-act structure of a movie. Like, for instance, I've often wondered if The Voyage of the Dawn Treader would have been better as a miniseries as opposed to a movie. Because really the story in the book doesn't have an ongoing plot line with a climax at the end and then a resolution. It kind of does in that they're on a journey, but really each island that they stop at is an isolated adventure. The movie version of Voyage of the Dawn Treader really tried to give it an overarching plot with the stuff with the green smoke from the Dark Island and whatnot, but the Dark Island, or in the book, the island where dreams come true, with dreams being like your worst nightmares, basically, that was not that important as a part of the story, and it doesn't really have anything to do with the important moments at the end. Anyway, those are my thoughts on books being split into two or three movies, when it should be done, when it shouldn't be done, and what the alternatives are. I hope that you enjoyed this and found it to be interesting. If you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday.